All right, how are you guys doing today? We're going to take a look at section 6.1, which is ratios, proportions, and the geometric mean. Now, a lot of this is going to be some algebra review, so hopefully you guys should be A-OK -okay with this material. Now, the first thing we're going to do when we take a look at the word ratio of two numbers, A to B, we, we've got to know that we've got to reduce these to our lowest terms. Now, you could write them as A over B, or you could write them the second way, which is a and then the colon of b. Now, we've got a couple of ratios here, so we're just going to simplify those and get right into 64 meters to 6 meters. So the first number is going to go on the top, 64 meters in the numerator, and then 6 meters in the denominator. Now, when I reduce those, 2 goes into each one of those. So let's just start with that. And I get 32 over 3. Now, notice I've got this meters right there that unit's going to cancel out. So my final ratio is 32 over 3. Can't reduce it anymore. So let's jump right into number 2. Oh my gosh. Now here's a common mistake right here. Most people be like, oh, well that's just going to reduce down to 1 over 4. And eh, that's not true. What you've got to make sure that you do is get both units to be the same. So when, you, when you're looking at two different units, what you always want to do is take the smaller unit and look at that one. That one, we've got feet and inches. So this unit right here, inches, we're going to want to change feet into inches. So how many inches are in a foot? Well, you should know that there's 12 inches in one foot. So what we're going to do is multiply that by 12 inches per one foot. Now this way when you do this watch what's going to happen. I want to deal with first the units. Feet and feet are going to cancel out and so are inches and inches. So that way all of our units will be gone and we've got the right piece to work with. Now I do have got I do have 5 times 12 which gives me a grand total of 60 and then 20 times 1 which just gives me 20. When I reduce that I just get 3 to one. Now a lot of times people just ask like, oh is that okay if I just write three? And the answer for that is no because a ratio is between two terms. So I've got to have a number in the numerator, which in this case is three, and a number in the denominator, even if it's just one. Now I think you've got the hang of this now, so go ahead and do number three and number four on your own. A little hint with number four, how many meters are in a centimeter? You're going to need that conversion to go ahead and do this one. When you're done, Go ahead and come back and see if you did each one of those correctly. For the last one, number four, hopefully you've got that one set up right. Now I'm going to show you really quickly how I can reduce this. Now both 150 and 600, they both have zeros on the end, so I'm going to take those both off. And then I'm just left with 15 over 60. Well, when I reduce 15 over 60, I just get one fourth. Easy peasy. Now one thing too to keep in mind, all of this ratio stuff you guys will see again in a course called chemistry when you do this thing called dimensional analysis. So you'll need to make sure that if your units are different, you've got to do some multiplying to get certain units to cancel out. But more on that later in those other courses. Now here are some other ratios that we're going to take a look at. Here we're going to learn this new term called an extended ratio. And for example, number five, we've got to find the measures in this triangle CDE that the extended ratios of 1, 2, and 3 find the measures of the angles. So one of the things you guys better know by this point is that when you have a triangle, I'm going to call this triangle C, D, and then E, those ratios right here, 1, 2, and 3, they're going to be the same thing as 1x, 2x, and 3x. Those are going to be the three inside angles. And the thing that you need to know is that all three angles on the inside of a triangle add up to 180. So if I find the sum of those three terms, you better be able to figure this out. Altogether, I get 6x equals 180, which gives me x has a value of 30. All right? But I am not just done because I found x, because look at our question asks us. It says find the measure of the angles. So that means x, we already know that's 30. But the 2x angle, that's going to be 60, or 2 times 30. Our 3x angle, that's just going to be 3 times 30, or 90. So make sure you go back and read the question. But extended ratios of triangles, all you have to do is add the three values up. Put an x next to each one of the um, numbers in the ratio, and you got it. Add those three things up, set them equal to 180, 
figure out what x is, and then plug it back in to find the value for each angle. Now in the next one, number six, they're talking about perimeter of a room is 48, and the ratio of its length to its width is 7 to 5. Find the length and width of the room. First thing, draw a picture. All right, so there's our rectangle of our room. Now the ratio of its length to width is 7 to 5. So what you're going to do basically is put an x next to each one of those numbers. So I'm going to have 7x and 5x. Now in a rectangle, opposite sides are going to be the same. So this side on the left is going to be 5x, and this side on the top is going to be 7x. Now I'm told that the perimeter is 48. Now perimeter, remember, means distance around the entire outside. So if I add all of these up, 5x, 7x, 5x, 7x, I should end up with 48. So what we're going to do is formalize that and write that out and come up with an equation. Now you could have come up with any of the three following equations. Either the first one, the second one where you have 10x plus 14x equals 48 because you just double both sides. 5x doubled is 10x and then 7x doubled is 14x. So you could do that or you could do the other thing and just do that mentally and add all the sides together and come up with 24x equals 48. All you need to do then is solve for x and when you do that you get x equals 2. Now we're not done though because it said find the length and width of the room. So if 5x will have a value of 10 and then 7x will have a value of 7 times 2 is 14. So the length of the room is going to be 14 and its width will be 10. You might switch those two around and say that in the reverse order it really doesn't matter as long as you have those two values correctly. Now for example number 7 we've got another triangle problem here with the extended ratio of 1 to 3 to 5. So what I want you to do is two things. One, draw a picture. Two, set up an equation. And actually a third and fourth thing. Third thing, go ahead and solve for x. And then the fifth thing, or the fourth thing, is find the measure of each angle. So make sure you do that and then we'll come back and compare our answers. Make sure you draw a picture because that sometimes helps people with that part too. So how did you do? Hopefully you got a value of 20 for x. Now when you substitute that in, you should get 20 for the value of x, 3x is 60, and 5x is 100. Now, here's the way you check, just double check and make sure that you didn't mess this up. If you add up all three angles, 20, 60, and 100, you better get 180. If not, you screwed up, so you need to go back, check your arithmetic, and make sure you do the thing right. Like, what is a proportion really? So, one of the things we've got to do is actually define what a proportion is. I don't know if anybody ever did that for you before. So if they did, great. If not, we're going to go ahead and do that for you now. An equation that states that two ratios are equal, that's what a proportion is. Formally, there you go. You've got your definition for a proportion. Now again, two steps to solve a proportion. First thing you want to do is cross multiply. Second thing you do is solve for the variable. Now in the first one, we're going to take a look at this. So I'm going to cross multiply here. I'm going to take 10 times x, multiply those two, so I'm going to get 10x for that. And then when I multiply these two together, 5 times 16, well that ends up giving me 80. So you just cross multiply, and then now we're just going to have to divide. If I divide both sides by 10, I get x equals 8. Not too hard. But here's my question. Let's go back here and take a look at our proportion. If like, what if I would have reduced the 5 over 10 in the beginning? Like, would that have still given me 8? I don't know, so let's check it out. So if I would reduce that to 1 half, so 1 over 2 equals x over 16. Let's see if I still end up with 8. So 16 times 1, if I multiply those two, I get 16. And then 2 times x, so if I multiply those two together, I get 2x. So then when I divide, I get 8 for my value of x. So I could have reduced up front and gotten 8, or I could just simply start out by cross multiplying and dividing. Either way, it's pretty cool. Now for the next one, this is one where you've got to be a little bit more careful. These two terms, when you multiply them together, no big deal there, 3 times y, or 3y times 1, you just get 3y. But here's the one I want you to actually take your time and write it out, because this is a very, very common mistake. I want you to write it like this in the beginning. 2 times the quantity y plus 1. When you get good at it, you'll be sure to do that part in your head, and 2 times y gives you 2y, and then 2 times 1 gives you 2. That's the mistake most people make. They'll put a 1 there instead of a 2, so don't be that guy. All right, Take your time, make sure you set your proportion up 
correctly and when you cross multiply that you cross multiply the right way now when you subtract 2y you just get y equals 2 and that's it you're done alright so that's the first two examples go ahead and do the next four on your own and then come back double check see if you got those right don't be lazy and just move on to the next session go yeah I got this because the only way you get better at math is by practicing so practice these next four problems so how'd you do with those last four hopefully you got those all right now number 10 16 over 5 can't reduce that so just leave it as an improper fraction that's fine 11 you should have come up with 12 as your answer 12 you should have come up with 6 for the value of y and number 13 you should get a value of 5 for x now make sure it's nice it's neat and your writing is really really good because that's one of the things you know that I'm really picky about and I'm sure your, your other math teachers are too so be neat and be organized and be thorough it'll only help you when you're in math classes beyond the geometry now let's get into a new thing geometric mean now you've dealt with a mean before in algebra one and in other courses and you've just kind of some of you just kind of play with this if you had two numbers say four plus seven you just add those up and then divide by two to come up with their average and their average would just be let's see that'd be eleven over two which is just about five and a half or five point five so you've seen the term mean before but now we've got a geometric mean this mean that you did before that was called an arithmetic mean or an arithmetic mean depending on how some people pronounce it so that mean you've seen before the geometric mean you've never ever seen before so this is going to be a little bit new so the geometric mean is going to be the positive number x that satisfies this ratio a over x equals x over b now that ratio is going to come into play later on and when we take a look at right triangles because you're going to take a look at the geometric mean of a right triangle and in there you're going to have to set up this ratio but that is going to involve altitudes and legs of right triangles so more on that in the other chapter but you're going to start with this proportion now if we were to solve that for x first thing we would do is multiply the two x's together and when you do that that just gives you x squared is going to be whatever a b is now since i'm dealing with the positive number x x is just going to be the square root of a times b whatever that ends up giving me so in a nutshell that's all you're really going to do is multiply the two numbers together and square root them. for this a geometric mean so x is going to be the square root of 24 times 48 all right that's not too hard now before you go go all freaking out and multiplying 24 and 48 together what I want you to do first is see what you can do to factor these now 24 and 48 when I take a look at those numbers 24 is actually a factor of 48 so I can break 48 down into 24 times 2 so I'm gonna have the square root of 24 times 24 times 2 now that's gonna be kinda really nice to work with because here when you simplify that 224 is underneath the radical well, that's going to come out so 24 is going to be outside the radical and then 2 is just going to be inside the radical well wow, that was pretty easy now if you would have multiplied the 24 and the 48 together holy cow you would get some big old whomping number of 1152 trying to simplify that as a square root is a real pain so do the factoring up front and that'll save you a lot of time in the end now let's take a look at number 15 so here we would have x equals square root of 12 times 27 now with this when I take a look at the factors of 12 any perfect square factors well I'm going to take a look at 4 times 3 and then for 27 when I multiply those together I'm going to have two factors of 9 times 3 now check out what's going to come out here the square root of 4 is just 2. Now I've got these two 3's right here. So I'm definitely going to have a 3 come out. And then I'm going to have a 9 here. So square root of 9, what's that? Well that's also 3. So when you actually simplify this, there's nothing else left underneath the radical. 2 times 3 times 3, that just gives me 18. Now if I would have multiplied 12 and 27 together I would have gotten 324 so in between here I could have just thought about it like this x equals square root of 324 and that's really easy to do because if you know your perfect squares you would recognize that that's just going to be 18 so this one could have worked out really nicely that way 14 not so much 15 yeah that one would have been great now for number 
16. Go ahead and let's take a look at this one. We're going to have x equals to square root of 18 and 54. Now 18, one of my uh, pairs of factors for that, I'm going to take a look at is maybe 9 and 2, but 54. See if 18 goes into 54. And I think it actually does. The question is how many times? It goes in three times. So 18 times 18 times 3. And then when I'm done, I'm left with 18 square roots of 3. And wow, that was like not too hard at all. The hardest thing is taking a look at our factors of 54 to break those down into factors that might be something I can use with the other one. But if that didn't work, and like if you didn't see that in the beginning, don't sweat it, it's no big deal. You could have just gone x equals 18 times 54. Here's another way to do it. You could have said, well, 18 is 9 times 2, and 54 is 9 times 6. All right, that's not a big deal. So 9, I've got a pair of 9, so a 9 is going to come out. But then on the inside, I still have 2 and a 6. So 2 times 6, well, that gives me 12. But 12, I can factor that a little bit more. So I'm going to have square root of 4 and square root of 3. Well, the square root of 4 is just 2. So I'm going to have 9 times 2 square roots of 3. And 9 times 2, I end up right back where I started with 18 roots of 3. So I could have gotten that either way. But whatever you see, whatever numbers you see, that's what you're going to have to work with. Now on 17, by now I think you have this. So go ahead and try 17 on your own. Pause the video and come back see if you got it right. So how'd you do with that one? Hopefully you came up with 12 roots of 2. You might have done it a little bit differently, but make sure you keep your x equals lined up. Don't get lazy and drop your square root sign anywhere. And make sure you finish the problem off and you come up with 12 square roots of 2. All right, that's it for ratios, proportions, and the geometric mean. So go forth, conquer some math stuff, and get out of here. All right, peace.